everyone, welcome to Liverpool. So we're going to get straight to it. We've got Terry Pollinger, Deputy General Secretary. We've had a fantastic briefing here today, Terry, about 500 or so of our senior officials around the country, and you brought them some news. So I think it's best if you just go straight in with our members. Yeah, the old adrenaline's still uh, pumping a bit, but no, another excellent briefing, another confirmation, you know, whatever happened last week, it doesn't detract from anything of where this trade union is, and we're still solid in our dispute with Royal Mail. So, right, so what has happened? I think the, uh, the half yearly results come out. I think the penny is dropping. I think the business is realising that they, they can't do anything in this business and move it forward unless they can take the people with them. And of course, the people are behind this trade union, the CW, so they've got to talk to us. I think there's been a wasted 18 months. I think it's mismanagement and we've called each other names and we've been in this dispute. But the company have come on to us and said about instigating talks. Afternoon, yeah, afternoon everyone. Welcome to Liverpool. So we're going to get straight to it. We've got Terry Pollinger, Deputy General Secretary. We've had a fantastic briefing here today, Terry, about 500 or so of our senior officials around the country and you brought them some news. So I think it's best if you just go straight in with our members. Yeah, the old adrenaline's still uh, pumping a bit, but no, another excellent briefing, another confirmation, you know, whatever happened last week, it doesn't detract from anything of where this trade union is, and we're still solid in our dispute with Royal Mail. So, right, so what has happened, I think the, uh, the half yearly results come out, I think the penny is dropping, I think the business is realising that they, they can't do anything in this business and move it forward unless they can take the people with them. And of course, the people are behind this trade union, the CW, so they've got to talk to us. I think there's been a wasted 18 months. I think it's mismanagement and we've called each other names and we've been in this dispute. But the company have come on to us and said about instigating talks. So obviously our dispute is always about getting us back in the room, getting around the table and trying to get an acceptable agreement. I do feel, as I say, we've lost 18 months. It's put the company under unnecessary pressure and people should have worked with us in the first place but what we've said to the business is this we can't just walk in that room because you've said about talks if we're going back into talks we need to know that they've got some chance of being successful and the only way they're going to be successful is both sides are pragmatic about these issues and recognize the mutual interest structure of our agreements so our aspirations our plan in the four pillars notwithstanding their new plan that they've come out with yes it's got to be talked with we want to grow this business we want to grow parcels. I think we do need a different pipeline for parcels if we do that, uh, if we grow parcels successfully, and it's great revenue for the business. But we also need other products and services. We need investment in general because our future won't be sustained just on parcels uh, alone. So these are issues we've raised before. But if we're now going into the room and they want to be serious about them, that's fine. But what we've said to be clear to people, if we're going back in that room, one, all of the issues in the union's uh, in principle disagreement I've got to be on the table to be discussed in that, in that uh, environment and that they will not be subject to the dispute resolution process or external mediation. We've done all that. These are talks to resolve the dispute. Management are going to put stuff on the table as well. We know that. But they are accepting that all of those issues there are there and we ain't got to go back through any other procedures. These are the talks to resolve the dispute. So if we're successful, that's great. If we're not, then clearly... We would be uh, we would be reballoting. What they have also said, which is hugely important to our parcel force members, is they will back off of the Chupi situation and the limited company situation uh, with parcel force that have been part of this dispute. That gives uh, that gives that takes a load off our members who've got that as a, on a daily basis while we've been in this dispute. That takes that away, so we can have negotiations about that, and then we'll see how the negotiations progress. We're going to offer them. The EC have made the decision. Uh, one that I totally support is that if, if then talks are going to be successful and if we're being reasonable people as well, there's got to be a period of calm. So we have said that if, if they embrace us in the right way and enter these talks in the right fashion, then we won't reballot uh, at least until the end of February and neither will we give notice on parcel force during that period either if unless they take executive action or unless they break the talks down. So a period of calm to the end of February. Then we take a rain check. You know, if we've made progress, well, we'll see where we are. If, if, as always, we can resolve this without the need for strikes and stuff like that, then and we're doing it from a position of strength, which we have got, then that's good union business. 
but I, I tell you now, to all of our members, so the members are watching this, we have never been stronger. For all those people that were disheartened by the legal challenges and stuff like that, this has never just been about strike, all right? If we have to, we will. Don't worry about that. We will be determined, and I know our members are 100% behind us. But it's always about getting back into the room and getting the dynamics right for a decent negotiation to come out of an acceptable agreement. No one now is going to come over the hill and save this great public service. We know what's happened politically. The only people that can save this great public service and save our members and protect their security, etc., is this trade union. And Royal Mail have now, I believe they're starting to recognise, but they've got to recognise on the Royal Mail board, unless they've got this trade union negotiating and being able to influence, put our idea, bring our ideas to the table, then they won't succeed either. And I think the pressure has shifted onto them because if they're not careful, they're going to get to the end of financial year and it's going to be an absolute crisis on them. And that is on their head because they walked away from us 18 months ago. So I want to take you back, if I can, Terry, to, to sort of the, the beginning of the dispute in the early part of this year when actually you were setting out and saying these are the terms of negotiation for us and Royal Mail over a, a period of months through the ballot, through the ballot result, through the court case, saying no, that's not the terms of the result. And here we are today with actually them entering negotiation review on the terms that you set out. That is a tribute to the solidarity of our membership, surely, isn't it? Uh, absolutely, yeah. I mean, I mean what, it, it, what, what it's created is a situation where both parties know it needs a solution. Now, previous to that, I think the company, um, there's no doubt in our mind, I mean, they choose who they want to lead the business and everything else, but this, this company shifted to an extremely macho type of management attitude. That has revealed itself right down at the lowest level. You know the culture is absolutely appalling. So whether it's a union or not, I mean, even if we were on board with them with a plan, if you don't get the culture right, you're still not going to deliver it. You know, you've got to motivate. We want motivated people. Our people have always had a vocational sense of purpose in this business. They've always been brilliant workers. That's why they're loved by the public. And the business, you don't exploit, you know, that situation by coming down and, you know, the way that some people have been treated in the workplace, different rules for management than there is for workers. That's not the way to do it. We want it to do it together. And don't forget, we had an agreement to do that. We had a blueprint for the future agreement, which was the four pillars. So that is still there. That's the only agreement, the, the latest agreement we've got with the company. The principles of that have got to be honoured, but we do accept things have moved on in 18 months and we're going to have to deal with some other issues. We're ready to do that. We're ready to take responsibility. We're ready to deal with the difficult decisions as a union. We've always done that. But you have to treat us with respect and we have to be entitled to influence and there has to be mutual interest solutions. A, rep, if I, uh, a word, if I can, Terry, for our <laughs> reps and members. If you take us back to just a few weeks ago when you and I and, and lots of other people were in the High Court and it was a... You know, an out, such an outrage to be defeated. In Royal Mail at that point must have got their tails up. But our members are like the immovable force in the trade union movement, aren't they? And maybe the next day when Royal Mail woke up, they had a slightly different reflection because they can't take, as you've made the point from the rostrum today, as, as, Dave, as Dave Ward has made the point, this company cannot change without our members. And they have stuck with this union, haven't they? Powers of recovery. The powers of recovery of this trade union is unbelievable. And I think that's because the way we engage our, our members, the way, you know, the work your team's done on, on taking comms, you know, taking us into every workplace, you know, and, and our peaceful people listen to the arguments. Don't forget, Royal Mail have a better opportunity to do that than we do. So if they can't convince their people, we can, and they've got to look at their message. Haven't they? So, no, our powers of recovery, we've had it before. We, listen, they've got to take us to court. I've said to you, it's not about strike, is it? It's not about, if we have to, we defend ourselves and we will do it. Without question, we'll do it. But it's not about that. It's about recognising that you cannot move this business unless you take the people with you. And to do that, you've got to talk to their representatives, the CW, because no one has got the law. We've had two record returns, two record yes votes. They've had to spend fortunes trying to stop us just taking industrial action. The mere fact we're forcing that at a time when they're saying their skin is another, another waste of their money because there's no need for it. Treat us right, honour our agreements, honour the heritage of this great public service, ensure our members have got the security they deserve, and we can build something that can compete with anyone. Because together as well, we should be campaigning against these other companies that are not paying decent wages, that are undercutting what this great public service does. We should be challenging the regulator and how it treats Royal Mail. Just find it, 58 million quid. Look, Royal, it's not just us we've been accused of being illegal, Royal Mail have as well, by the way. So we have got something in common. But um, no, our members, listen, solidarity is the key. I think in any 
I don't want to, you know, I can't, but if, if you're going into any war, any battle, any serious situation, for us as the negotiators, if it comes to it, you need to be able to look behind you and look at us. I look behind me and I've got 110,000 postal workers standing behind me when I walk into that negotiating room. If they don't respect that, then that's their, that's their fault, that's their downfall. And it's a lack of their emotional intelligence if they don't realise they have got to talk to this trade union. Thanks, Terry. So I'll, I'll, on that note then, just to give you a chance to a last message if you like, because I think you've clearly identified where we're at, is, um, you know, it's, it's been a really, really busy year. Some of our stuff has been so intense, including like, you know, gate meetings off at the end of November, and our members have been dealing with a general election post, a Christmas post, Black Friday, Cyber Monday, etc. What would you say to them, you know, maybe a, maybe a Christmas message ahead of, and let, you know, just um, a final moment from you, I suppose, for this year before everyone starts to think about winding down and actually having some time with their family. Well, that's it, you know, and, and everyone needs a little bit of that, myself included. But um, it's been a magnificent year. It, you know, it's been, in fact, I'm up for election next year, so it's five years. I can't believe how quick it's, it's a blink of an eye. But our people have been absolutely tremendous. We've had two massive sort of ballots in that period, and we've changed, totally changed our communications, the way we engage with people, the ability to get into every workplace. And I go all around the country, and our members out there will know that. I go to meetings, and that take, you know, that's weekends and everything else. But it's inspirational because I'm walking into places now and, and the solidarity and the affection for each other in the workplaces and for our trade union, it, you couldn't fail to be in, inspired by it. But uh, So in terms of a Christmas message, massive thanks for all your support for this trade union. It is in your interest as well, by the way, but solidarity is, is the key. And this union really does and hasn't let you down. You know, we might have make mistakes or be criticised or whatever, but we've never, judge us on our agreements, judge us on what your terms and conditions, we've never let you down and we will continue to protect you. On the other side of it, I want to thank you on behalf of everyone in this country for what you've done during this Christmas period. Uh, I, people still love their postal work, there's no question about it, and our frontline people that are out there, but I want to thank everyone else in, in distribution, network, in processing, Parcel force, you know, all our different, uh, all our different members. Wherever you sit in the organisation, you're playing your part. But our postal workers are loved, and they should be celebrated. So I thank you on behalf of the country. I wish you and yours a, a truly happy Christmas, and all the best for the new year. And you don't just get presents at Christmas, because the CWU will deliver you another one in 2020. Thanks very much.